Collagen is an essential protein for your body. It goes to form healthy skin, bone, cartilage, tendons. And it's absolutely essential in that you know the food so that you can get more of the foods which enhance it. And all the studies show that the more of the foods and more collagen that you consume, the healthier all these parts of the body are. But just as important as that, right at the end of this video, on the last part, I'll show you how to maximize, not just where to get it from foods, which you'll learn now, but how to maximize the benefits in your body, how to actually enhance the collagen production in what we call the fibroblasts in your cell. So it's really important to hang on there because I'll give you the full picture of it. Now, first of all, it's really important to understand the benefit of having collagen in food. Now, supplementing is great, and I'll have a video on that as well, but when you get it in food, you get certain synergies. You get lots of the other foods that it's linked in with that can help increase, enhance that collagen. So it's really good. Now, the other really good reason to have it in food is that it tastes nice too. And you'll see some of that and hear about that. Now, historically, we would have three meals a day or more that would have collagen in it. Nowadays, we probably don't even have one or enough in our diet to actually help out and, and help with maintenance. So we lose about 1% of our collagen every single year in our body. And so what we want to do is make sure that we get plenty and plenty from our food more and more as we age. And now if you're into sport or physical activity or you're sick, you also need to add on some collagen. So the critical factor here is to understand that you can get a lot of it from your food. And when you understand that, you can see, first of all, it only comes from animal origin. Now, people have said it comes from spirulina, wrong. It comes from garlic, wrong. It comes from some other plant, wrong. They help enhance collagen production in the cells once those molecules have got into there. But they're of no value for collagen production unless you've actually got the actual amino acids, which I'll show you in a moment. So it comes from um, animal only, and that includes bone, cartilage, ligament, tendon, skin, gut, uh, internal organs, your muscles as well, but muscles not so much uh, as these parts of the body here. And so when you consume anything with those in it, then it goes down, it gets digested in the stomach and small intestine. It produces these collagen peptides. And these collagen peptides also break into amino acids that are the building block for collagen. So the body has to actually break down the collagen in the animal food and then through digestion, and then put it back together when it gets into the cells where it needs to do the work, the bone, the tendon, the muscle, and so on. So it takes it apart, puts it back together. And so when it's breaking it down in the, the amino acids, the main ones are glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. And these and the peptides go through to the small intestine and into the blood. And then they go into the fibroblasts, or well, they go into these tissues. So they, they go into all your collagen-containing tissue, and the fibroblasts are the cells in there that actually manufacture the collagen. So they start manufacturing lots and lots of collagen. So the more you've got coming in here, the more that they can manufacture. And it goes into all of this. Given that it's a, a huge percentage of our body, we need lots and lots of the collagen. So it's produced, it goes into the bone, it produces the collagen in the bone, it goes into the tendon, and so on and so on and so on, all the way through. Now to assist with that though, we also know that it needs vitamin C, lysine, another amino acid, iron and copper, to mention just a few. They're the things that are essential. So one of the things I always tell people, have lots and lots of vitamin C. And then, then it goes to form collagen in the actual cells, but it has to be taken apart in digestion, get through into the cells, and then put together back as collagen. And right at the end, I'll show you some of the collagen enhancers and how you can enhance digestion to get the maximum amount of collagen. So with that, the first and foremost way that most people get it from is chicken and chicken skin. I've got a whole video on chicken skin. Uh, we've been told for the last 50 years, don't eat chicken skin, it's bad for you. They're absolutely wrong, rubbish. They've got no idea. These health authorities are, are, are doing a microscopic approach to nutrition. They're not looking at that big picture. The skin is the most nutritious part of the chicken that you're gonna consume. So make sure you have the chicken skin, watch that video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Chicken foot soup, and that's something you would get at a, a, maybe a regular Western restaurant, but certainly it's a delicacy at Asian restaurants. And now all ancient cultures have these foods that help with chicken skin. In fact, there's some old an old adage in Mauritian culture that says, um, uh, if you want healthy babies, eat, have chicken, um, foot soup. Wow, how's that? 
And these, these, these adages go through all of the cultures. So the message is, it's not just about healthy babies, it's healthy you, healthy cartilage, because, um, uh, by the way, uh, collagen is essential for healthy reproduction. So coming back here, chicken foot soup, chicken bone soup, not chicken soup, not chicken noodle soup. There is no chicken in the noodle. There's no collagen in the chicken noodle soup. You need the bone, the cartilage. So once you've eaten the meat and once you've eaten the skin, cook the bones up, make it into a chicken soup bone broth. And the advantage of that is it's readily available and easy to cook. Now, one other source from our feathered friends is the egg yolk. And egg yolk is another great rich source of collagen. So again, try and find one of these, have some chicken skin, throw in some egg yolk. Now the other source, very common source, is cattle and pigs. And again, I'm not talking about the meat here because the meat has collagen, but at relatively low levels by contrast. And this includes things like bone broth. Now, what happens with bone broth is when you cook the bones and the cartilage of the animal that you're, you know, you've got some leftover bones after um, some foods or a big meal, you cook it down and you keep cooking it. You cook it for 24 or 48 hours and it simmers and just boils away and, and breaks it down into literally gelatin, which is a kind of a precursor to the amino acids. A, gelatin is a, is, a, is a great source, by the way, as you'll see in a moment, of, of collagen. And so we've got um, of um, amino acids. So we've got the bone broth, and everyone talks about bone broth. It is fantastic. However, uh, a lot of the studies also show that we only get about one third of the actual collagen from the bone broth absorbed into our bodies. I'll mention that later. Pig's trotters, which is just the foot of the pigs, and that's cooked up in various ways, including in soups and so on. Uh, organ meat. Organ meats are the easiest and best source, and historically, they've always been the treasured items. It's only with the Western focus on the steaks and the meaty part that we've lost this. And the organ meats include intestines, and they're actually called uh, chitterlings. And the intestines were cooked into soups, and uh, again, up until probably 30, 40 years ago, these were quite common. Um, you would have tongue, um, stum oh, so your ox tongue with ox tongue. I remember growing up with ox, ox tongue, uh, having it as a, as a meal served around the family, and, and it was my dad's one of my dad's favourites. Um, stomach and tripe was another one of his, and um, traditional sausage such as blood sausage. And I grew up with something called black pudding, which is a blood sausage. It was the organ and blood. Uh, and as a result, it had a high concentration of collagen. Now, these are all collagen rich, much more than the meat, for the very simple reason, they're all connective tissue and they're all made out of collagen. So if you can understand any of the skin, any of the intestines, any of the things holding us together, this connective tissue that gets cooked and cooked and free, well, that's rich in collagen. As a result, you end up with this. Now, some studies have, said, some studies have also shown that consuming some sausages, some normal sausages, as long as they're not the 100% beef and meat sausages, then, uh, and by the way, and if you get any type of meat, make sure preferably it's organic and please make sure it's grass fed. Um, and I'll explain that in another video later on. But at the end of the day, what you want to do is get the healthiest foods that you're consuming and then you can use them to cook up any of these. But they're sausages, uh, that you can get from some of the supermarkets or some of the good butchers around the place, traditionally older style butchers and so on, will have some of the organ meats in them. Ask them and if they do, don't go yuck, go great. It's rich in collagen. Gelatin is also fantastic because it's rich in all of the amino acids. Basically, it's one step away from the collagen peptides. It just hasn't been broken down into those peptides and the amino acids, but given the right processes, it, it can break down. The third major source is the marine environment, and they're the marine animals. Remember, you only get collagen in animals, not in plants, so marine animals. And the first and best one is obviously sardines. And the reason sardines are so good is because when you eat the sardines, you eat the skin, and you eat the organs, yep, you eat the intestines, you eat the bones, you eat the cartilage, you eat all of those components in there. So you are not just getting the meat, the muscle that you would normally get on lots of the other foods you eat, you're getting all of those extremely collagen rich. So sardines are absolutely fantastic in that regard. So I've included skin, bones, and all in there. Now, salmon or any, any fish that you're eating the skin, remember, because we tend not to eat the bones of those big fish, although you can make them into a, a fish head soup or a fish bone soup or something like that. But 
when you have the skin of those fish, whether it's salmon or trout or barramundi, it doesn't matter. The skin is the richest part. Now, it's also where the omega-3 fatty acids are, just below the skin. And it's, uh, it's, it's just rich in so many um, nutrients in there, including collagen. That's what's binding. That's what it's made of, collagen. So anything to do with fish skin and fish head soup, not something that I would have traditionally had, but certainly in Asia, uh, and, and, and various parts of the world, fish head soup uh, is a delicacy. Again, why? Because it's got the, the bones, it's got the cartilage, it's got the, or a little bit of the organ head meat and all those other bits and pieces that go in there. Oysters, uh, extremely rich source of collagen, mussels, uh, jellyfish. Jellyfish are an unusual source and of course you, you don't go down to the beach and get the jellyfish, you get the ones that, that are, you know precisely what they are, they've been um, processed and packaged and so on, so you can get them in packets. And you can also go into, um, again, Asian food restaurants and get some jellyfish soup or jellyfish added to various meals. So jellyfish is a great source of collagen, very, very good source of collagen. And finally, the crustaceans. And these include all your, your prawns, your crabs, uh, especially when they're cooked into, again, a, a, or a soup or a pho or something or some form of fish stew and they're using some of the shell, but even without the shell, they're still rich in uh, uh, collagen and break down and provide you with all the amino acids and so on. So that's the third major source. Now, the trick is though, we've got to get enough to supply our growing needs. And uh, every year that we age, we lose about another percent of our collagen store and back up and ability to build collagen. And so we need more, we need to enhance it more. And the, the recommended guidelines, at the top end are 15 to 20 grams. 20 grams is considered the lower end of the therapeutic range. So if you've got muscle aches and pains or sore tendons, or you wanna really do something positive for you, aiming for 20 grams or more per day. And in a study that they did in Japan, where they looked at how much collagen people get in their meals, and Japan probably consumes uh, more collagen per meal than the Western diets, they found that you only got 0.2 to 2.5 grams in a normal, common, everyday Japanese meal. So we'd probably be about 1, 1.5 grams. So that means we're going to have about 10 meals a day to get up to the 15. So it's not going to work, is it? Hence why you've got to add in these collagen meals. However, if you ate collagen-rich foods, so in this case, they were talking about um, eel with skin and fish with skin and all those bits and pieces, the, the range was 7.6 to 13.3 grams with each meal, which means you only needed three, two, three or four meals a day um, of those rich meals, which is what we used to do uh, 100 or 200 years ago or 1,000 years ago. We had a lot more of those organ type meats and so on. So that's the only way we're going to get that. Uh, and of course, one of the, another study that I briefly mentioned earlier was that only about 30% of what we consume gets into the blood. So that leads me then onto the next question. How can we enhance it? How can we improve it? And this is what's critical. The first and foremost way is to improve the digestibility. What they do with collagen to make it into a supplement. So they'll get the fish scale, the fish skin, the fish bones, the fish cartilage, for example, or, or the cow, beef, or whatever it is. And they'll usually soak them in an acid, commonly acetic acid. And acetic acid breaks them down, and then they're exposed to protein, digestive enzymes, which breaks them down and it creates these, uh, um, the peptide, collagen peptides that I've talked about already. And, and so what we want to do is enhance our digestion. The first thing we want to do to get more of the collagen out of all the food that we're going to consume is enhance it. And the first thing you can do is pre-treat foods with vinegar or lemon juice, anything that is acetic. Um, I'm sorry, acid. So in case of vinegar, which is acetic acid, has a pH of two. Um, lemon juice has a pH of around about 2.5. Orange juice has a pH of three and so on. Um, and that leads to the formation of collagen hydroxylates, which are what you get in your supplements. So you can go pay for the supplements or you can just um, pre-treat them, marinate them in something else that's a little bit acidic. And as long as it's a little bit acidic, a pH of five or below, check out all the other posts I've done on um, uh, acid and pH and stomach acid and so on. You'll see how this all overlaps in here. Um, and you get the form that's much more easily absorbed. Now, 
to also further that, you can also increase your stomach acid. And if you've got any gut digestive issues, you've probably got low stomach acid. And the first thing you want to do is increase your stomach acid. I know some people say, oh no, too much acid. No, the acid is actually too low, but it's getting up too high. And uh, check out my videos specifically on acid reflux and digestion to do with this. Um, they're extensive and uh, they're literally an accumulation of, of years and years of research into all this area. So you increase the stomach acid, which is the same as pre-treating essentially, and you can do that with something called betaine hydrochloric. And betaine hydrochloric is available at the health food stores and so on, and or vinegar. And you take a little sip of vinegar, a little bit of vinegar, mix it in with some water, always mix it in and dilute it, down it goes with a meal, before, during, or just after a meal. Not long after, but just after a meal, either in that time frame, best if you do it just before or with a meal. And that all increases the acidity in the stomach, which then makes it easier to open up the protein molecules so it can be digested. And again, I've got a, a whole video just on the benefits of vinegar in digestion. Check out those uh, videos. Uh, and the final part of digestion is to add protein enzymes. So you can get supplements that have what are called proteases in them. And these proteases help break down proteins. And so what they do is help break down the proteins that are coming from collagen into the amino acids and into the peptides, which can then be used. And some examples, you can get it as a supplement or as a food source. And the main foods that you would probably know that are rich in enzymes, and this is only a short list, but uh, pineapple, papaya, mango, kiwi fruit, a whole raft of those. Uh, even, even orange juice will help with the enzyme digesting as well. So it gives you the acid and it gives you for the pH in the stomach and it gives you the enzymes as well. So all of these have lots and lots of benefits, multiple benefits. And the aim is to increase digestion of collagen. Now, if you don't want to do that well, then you can look at the next way of enhancing your collagen. So at the end of the day, for us to get the benefit of collagen, we need the amino acids in there. So we need the uh, uh, glycine, the proline, the hydroxyproline, and a, a few other bits and pieces that I just showed you. But there are, if you've got that in there, there are certain things that you can supplement with or add to your food or add to your diet that are going to enhance the collagen formation. And they don't do this by putting the molecules in, so they're not collagen per se, they just go through the, some of the metabolic pathways that stimulate the growth of collagen in the body. So it simulates the fibroblast through half a dozen biochemical processes. And the first one, and my favorite, is obviously melatonin. Melatonin has hundreds and hundreds of benefits around the body. Forget the sleep part of it. It has hundreds and hundreds of benefits, including collagen synthesis. It actually enhances collagen synthesis. Your collagen production in your body is actually determined by your sleep weight or what's called your circadian rhythm, which is determined by melatonin. But that's just one of the ways that melatonin, in fact, melatonin probably has about a dozen different mechanisms by which it enhances collagen formation in the actual cells, in the fibroblasts, right exactly where it's needed. Spirulina and chlorella, these are the two green algae. And what's really typical, uh, I, I use um, uh, spirulina and chlorella, and I've been telling people this for 20 or 30 years now, it has spirulina and chlorella. And one of the first things that people come back to say is, wow, I can't believe the difference in my skin and hair. Now, of course, yes, you can make a joke. I don't have hair and I don't really see it. But trust me, the body hair is really, uh, really, really healthy. The message here is all these people come back and say, I can't believe my nails. I can't believe their hair because it stimulates the production of collagen, which goes into the nails, the hair and the bones and things which people don't see. Then you've got garlic, which is a little bit of a hidden one. Resveratrol, which is the one you can get in your your blue or purple grapes and so on. Um, kiwi fruit, another one. Uh, kiwi fruit, by the way, is also extremely rich in um, enzymes as well, so you can add that in there. Your cruciferous vegetables, um, in particular, the studies have one looked at cruciferous vegetables, but they've also looked at one of the major components of the cruciferous vegetables, sulforaphane, so so and that is what you get in all of them, but the highest concentrations are in broccoli sprouts. 
So broccoli sprouts have 20 or 30 or something like times high in liver. And lots of the other benefits of these cruciferous actually come from this. So great added, green tea has been shown. If you look up green tea, collagen, and so on, there are dozens of studies showing green tea stimulates the um, production of collagen in the cells. Uh, curcumin, which is your turmeric, your, all your, 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 your turmeric and your turmeric combinations and so on. I take a daily turmeric combination. And finally, probiotics. There is no way of avoiding it. If you check out the videos that I have on YouTube, you'll see that I have got over 30 or 40 videos specifically on gut-related issues because you can't avoid the gut. And all of these things, one way or another, work through a healthy gut. So we work on a healthy gut. But we find that the probiotics, the gut microbiome, has an important, and stimulated by probiotics and prebiotics, has an important role to play in stimulating the production of collagen around the body. Wow, how fantastic is that? So we look after the gut, it looks after our skin. And of course, that's why I have a video on the skin-gut connection. Please check out all the videos I've got, subscribe and share this information.